Oh, how I wish I could be teleported to the Southern Hemisphere now because of impending fall. Hi there, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going through a few little things that I do starting this time of year just to get it out of the way so that when my orchids do come in inside, the majority of them are clean and it isn't one big task. I always used to do this watching golf in the evenings and especially I remember two years ago doing almost all my orchids in the evening over the Ryder Cup, three days of Ryder Cup. But that is not happening this year. And besides, it gets a bit tedious to do all the orchids all at the same time. And what am I talking about? Well, you can see I'm wrapping microfiber around the sheaths, but the microfiber is soaked in pesticide, in insecticide, because in order to get these sheaths off, A, it's best to soak them, soften them up a little bit, and then B, my plan of course, is to make sure that there will be no bugs alive underneath, if there are any. I don't see any candidates that I have on the table with that potential, but you never know. So guess what? The Brassol Bola ones are the tedious ones. <laughs> I like my Catlia Dinard blue here. Big bulb, big sheath, shouldn't be too complicated. But these skinny little sheaths here, yeah, they're gonna take a while. So I soak with the insecticide. I have my batch here. And you would think that I'm sharing water. My plants, as, as long as I don't see one that is infested, and none of them really are, because I do spot check during the season, as long as I don't see any infested, I continue to use the same batch all the time for as long as it lasts and the same microfiber. Now, prior to starting the video, I did start soaking some sheaths. I don't know if they're good enough, but as it is hot, you see I'm keep making wetting them down so that they can become more pliable and they don't actually start drying on the plant, which is counterproductive. So let's have a look and see if there's one ready to come off and get cleaned up. Very therapeutic, this job, especially on a beautiful warm day. No wind and not so much background noise. And thank you so very much, all your feedback on my sound issues. And I'm going to out myself all my studying and looking to see what needs to be done. Do you know that not one video or tutorial brought me to a solution? And I've watched a lot of tutorials. I have Googled how to like a maniac. You know what my problem was? And I think it should be resolved now. The setting that I have on my computer, my desktop, Please don't laugh. I am so embarrassed, but I'm gonna tell you, expose myself. It was too low, the automatic setting. So when the new mic came in, it was lower than I thought. So I kept editing and filtering with the setting of the volume in the editing software. Oh, I feel like such an idiot. So now you know and that problem should be solved. Besides, the rustling, the nasty sounds that you hear, sometimes it got caught in my collar. Okay, that silly little clip thing was opposite of what, where the mic was pointing. So I've made myself a doohickey for my mic, yes. One evening I sat down with my pliers, my white wire, 
and I got the mic and I positioned it the way I wanted to and I started to wire it in such a way it is now a neck brace and it should sit at the right angle and stop with all the rustling noise. One thing that doesn't change is if I lower my head like this, I have to remember that I'm closer to the mic as opposed to now looking straight ahead. <laughs> I am so sorry and you guys, honestly, I owe you. I owe you big time and I don't know how to, how to thank you and, and appreciate, let you know that I appreciate your, your patience. Thank you so very much. Okay, <laughs> see? Clean, clean, suitable. And it has had a treatment of insecticide around it as well. It helps to have a clean pseudobulb to begin with and not lose your lacquer beads while you're doing this. But that sheath still felt quite dry. So the other ones, like my Brassavola digbiana, I wonder, but I can see some soaking going on. So basically that's what I do. Sometimes I get really picky about the bottom bit here, but not at this time, not at this time. This is all I need to see at this point in time. And then I take a toothbrush, also soaked in the insecticide, and I just do a little bit of cleanup of the old stuff from the previous year. It's not a must because I can see there's nothing hiding underneath. That's just aesthetics. This toothbrush comes very much in handy with rigid pseudobulb. So let's just do one more. Fall, people, I want to teleport myself. I want to teleport myself. Maybe to, you know, the Aussies. How about that? Or back to Kenya. This microfiber has been draped around it for quite some time. And still, it's quite dry. This is my Siamese doll Kiwi, who did have mealybug issues right at the beginning. And for that reason, we only got one flower. But so you get the point of what I'm doing here. And that is times 80 or 100 per pot. Double that depending on how many growths. We can get easily get to 300 times pseudobulbs, checking the sheaths and getting rid of them in preparation for the winter. They've had their fun in the sun. Time to get real now. And then another thing I do is take a clean rag also dip it into my insecticide here. And with that, I start wiping leaves. Now I have another six weeks easy for 80% of my collection to stay outside. And the rest just live outside permanently. So this is maybe just a little bit too soon but in case somebody else is in a similar situation and their temperatures change earlier than mine, this is a good time to do a video on what I do to prepare my orchids for coming inside. Some do with lemon, cleaning their leaves, but as I am going against any possible bug development during the winter months, I am using insecticide. It leaves a thin film on the top of the foliage and I consider that a bit of protection. I might be wrong, but so far it's worked for me and I feel like I'm killing, pun intended, <laughs> two birds with one stone and I was watching that root and I just snapped it. I was watching it. Ah. Nina, Nina. Yes, those are the damages that happen when I play with my orchids. Even though I'm keeping an eye out for things like that. Oh, man. Don't do that. Don't do that at home. That is not what I am suggesting. Don't, don't break leaves. Don't snap roots. 
I'm just doing what I do and I'm showing you what I do in preparation for fall and not have any funky surprises if they're stood on the shelf, whatever may have laid its eggs in the hot season to hatch in the wet season. I do not need those kinds of surprises. So that is another thing I do with my insecticide and my orchids. And then I also, oh, come here, go after the outer masks because they do get nasty looking from dust and holding them with wet hands. It leaves residue and marks. And once they are all cleaned up sheath wise, I give them a little bit of a wipe down with some bleach water just to get those watermarks off. I do about, when it's like this, I do about 10, maybe 15 pots a day. And I may have to repeat on occasions, depending on how quickly or not quickly I get done. Wiping down the outer mass for me is quite important simply because of the aesthetics when the orchids are indoors. It shouldn't look like a complete haberdashery mess blotchiness. I don't do this all the time, but when they come back inside once a year, I do it and get them to look somewhat presentable. I also go around all my pots and check for moss. While it has been helpful to me in the summer months, I do not need that much moss on my orchids going into the winter. So I make sure in the summer months not to get too ahead of myself with moss, too complacent. And I keep making sure the base is clear. But for my fall prep, I go around all my pots and start removing excess moss around the roots and especially around the base of the orchid. So that would be another little quick check and clean up just to be 100% sure that as the moss grows, it doesn't cover the base. And this is my Dromelia arborescens and it looks like, and it looks like it's growing a plantlet right there. We're gonna have Aborescence baby number two. See, I don't want to be fiddling around too much, but if I can get something like this off relatively easy, then I do that as well. And if it struggles, I leave it. But yeah, we're having a baby, oh my goodness. But that trunk is now good and clear of moss. Another thing, next thing that I do, check my light, my sun angle to be precise. So we are facing north, but this is my back wall of my Blooming Alley prime real estate. And you can see all the orchids tucked away back there. And you can see there is the curtain here. And for many, many weeks, five, six, I have never had to worry about this curtain because of the angle of the sun. But now you can see how it is starting to encroach on space. There is my other rack for my Sophronides and my Flageralis. And you can see that now that corner is actually starting to get sun. I used to have them, the Sophronides hanging a little bit more to the right. But at this point in time, I'm not ready to have them in the hot sun. We are still experiencing hot sun despite it being September. So I'm keeping them in the shade until the sun weakens a bit and eventually they will be having six hours of sunshine per day, but it will be the weaker winter sun. So that is what I'm checking as well this time of year. Here we are inside the alley and you can see up there 
how the orchids are really, really in the sun, also on the lower shelf, something which is new. That's how I burnt my Luminosa. It's because of where it's tucked back here. But uh, we're going to take that curtain down. The top will always still have the direct angle coming through, but they, in my understanding, can handle it. But the Luminosa caught me off guard. So now this curtain comes down until late evening and then that sun is much weaker. But you can see how much more shaded these are. The Luminosa has been now protected a little bit late. It's already burned, but you know, you understand what I'm trying to warn you of. Do not let your, the angle of the sun catch you out. I have placed Neo Phoenicia up there because it can take direct sun. It's not a problem up there at all. And all my hot growing dendrobiums. Pastoral innocence, I want it to bloom. That's why it's up there. And eventually my Parkinsonianum dangling down there will get direct sun because of the angle of how it enters through that gap right there. But it'll be the afternoon sun, the weaker sun. So light levels, light angles, big factor now is what I watch out for. Hence, now the curtain comes down and it has to be part of my daily routine. I must not forget. My indoor is the biggest and one of the tasks I don't like at all. But segue, not so fast. Light levels. A couple of weeks ago, this was not happening. There was no sun coming into my dining room indoor grow area. So this is important, especially because I have fowls living in here. They used to be on the glass shelf in the front right there. I know the light is bad at the moment. And I'm glad because actually the other point I'm pointing out is actually better you don't see it. <laughs> Too clear. But yeah, so this is angle of the sun. Very, very important. Moving my fowls back so that they don't get scorched. It can happen very easily. But the reason I brought you here, I have to really address, is to clean up and prepare the indoor space. Behind me is a mess. It is a grab and go film setup mess. Easy to get started, easy to film quickly get things sorted out but I'm not showing that to you but that is my biggest point and the one I like the least picking off sheets out in the sun under the umbrella any day every day all day cleaning up this area before the cold nights come not so much good temperatures today though love the humidity awesome and that kind of wraps up my fall prep considerations. Those are the staple ones. Those are like the cornerstones that create the foundation of all the other little details as I prepare for the orchids to be in and out come the winter time. I hope some of that was useful, interesting. I'd like to know what you do for your fall prep if you grow outside. Do you have to even bother with fall and winter or if you grow half outside, half inside? Is there anything I'm missing? Something you could advise me about? Maybe another idea of how to do it efficiently? Let me know. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.